Hi, I'm Sam and I want to show you a test that we do today. This line is an LSD tube from Sectivity and it has been hanging for a bit more than seven months and it has seen several thousand leash folds. So it's possibly one of the most used high lines ever that we're gonna tear apart now. And it has been hanging in the UV light. So it was the, the area where it was hanging was not protected by any shade, but totally in the sun and it has been hanging over summer. So basically the worst case you can get. And all the leash folds have been made in an area of about 10 meters. So that's also one of the parts where all these leash folds have happened. So you can see like it's like really fluffy on the top and the webbing is bent. This is caused by all the rocket mounts and similar tricks that we are doing. So every time we go down, we bend this webbing with the hands. And you can also see it looks a bit like cardboard now. It's not really like this new soft webbing anymore, but like it really folds and that's just a sign that he has been hanging long on the tension in the UV light. So now the first challenge is gonna be to put it into the seahorses in the test machine because it really makes it a bit difficult when it's so stiff and especially when the webbing is bent. Let's see how much this still holds. So first test, it held 18.87 kilonewton, which is still pretty reasonable considering what the webbing has been going through. Okay, so here we have a part of the webbing which was totally exposed to the UV light, but on which we did not really session on. Of course, we walked it a few times, but yeah, I would be astonished if it has even seen one single leash fold. It's still totally flat. It also feels like cardboard, but apart from that, it looks pretty new, except for the colors that are gone, obviously. Okay, we are at 10 kilonewton. Let's see at what force this webbing will explode. And the force goes up. If you want to see like how this looks, you can see the curve gets bigger and bigger. And here you can see the value at which the machine is right now. Okay, we expect the Big Bang really, really soon. Three, two, one, bam! Whoa! <laughs> and another nice explosion. Here you can see how it looks. Obviously, in such a rig, we had an intermittent connection. So here you can see the sewing that we had in the middle. So in the unlikely case of a mainline failure, we would not have a huge drop with it. But let's see how much this held. This sewing was made by Toby and the backup is just some Danima webbing we still had at home lying around, which held like six tons when it was new. We just wanted to get some use again for this old webbing. All right, this one held like 11.3 kilonewton, so still pretty safe, especially considering how much an intermittent connection has to hold. Like if you look at the backup tests with an intermittent connection we made a year ago, you can see that mostly the maximum forces are only slightly above four kilonewton. On the midline, we have fixed the line with the end loop. So we also want to test how much this end loop still holds. Right, also a big explosion. So the end loop tore apart at like 21.8 kilonewton. Actually, I just realized it's not even the end loop that tore apart, but it was the soon connection with the backup webbing. But as it held more than our sessioning part in the middle, it's actually still super fine. And as this happened, I still have the possibility because there is an additional loop to back up the main loop. So I'm gonna check how much the connection of that backup loop holds connected soon to the main line. Ooh, 
that sounded like a nicely tuned guitar and here we can see that the stitching broke as it was to be expected all right as a last test we tested the lsd tube at the part where it was clipped to the web lock and I clearly have to state that it was not a selectivity weblock, it was not the seahorse that has been used in this rig, but a weblock from a different brand, which I don't want to mention right here. And this webbing really got weakened, it was like a trace like this one. And at this part the webbing got weakened to like 11.7 kN. So this was by far the weakest place in the webbing we had and I think this is really something we need to find out like how much influence a permanent rig or a weblock has on permanent rigs and here when we go through the webbing here you can see the first traces here you can see the bigger traces and this was the last place where the webbing was locked this means this always happened after retensioning the line, those weakened places have been pulled out of the system. All right, let's come to the next chapter of our measurement, which is the leash, which is also really relevant for safety. And this leash has actually seen about twice as many leash folds as all the rest of the webbing because it has been hanging for about nine months longer than the webbing and it's actually still in pretty good conditions like it still feels pretty soft but we also have to say it was hidden a little bit behind a branch when it was not in use so it was not totally exposed to uv light but you can see how the shape has changed here because of so many leaf folds and here you can see the knot we have not opened this knot a single time okay sam you use two rings why did you use two rings because one ring is enough, says the ISA. Well, this was still an old school rig. We rigged it several months ago and back then it was still kind of standard to use two rings. Um, I'm totally fine to also use one ring. That wouldn't be a big deal in my opinion. Um, still to be found out, like if there is any more abrasion on freestyle highlines, if we use only one ring. But so far, like I, I often use just one ring and so far I haven't seen any difference. Yeah, there's a lot of the color that is coming off and even some small scars and scratches there. Can you guess why this happened? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, there is definitely a little bit of abrasion with the luxation coming off because like this leash has seen really several thousand leash falls so the webbing scratches the luxation off and the, the other damage i would guess it's partly because of hangovers that like are um, running into the leash rings if somebody doesn't pay attention like beginners who go on the line and have the leash rings in front of their hangovers and apart from that no honestly i don't really know maybe teeth teeth yes Every time you fall, you <laughs> try to bite for your life. <laughs> don't bite the leash rings, don't. <laughs> okay, we have to interrupt the test because the test machine is, is too small. And if these two pieces would touch, we have a big technical problem. So full stop on that one and we'll continue soon. Let's hope we don't break the seahorse and our pulling machine. Seahorse never break. Never, never. All right, ready for the test. And now we have enough distance, so problem solved. Let's hope. So when we look at this, we can see that one of the main purposes of the sheath is also like to protect the rope from UV light. And here it the rope still looks like in amazing conditions. All right, now we even had to take the leash rings out to gain a few centimeters. Let's hope it explodes, but the leash rings haven't moved at all. Also at eight and a half kilonewton, you cannot see any little trace on the leash rings. 
All right, we finally managed to break the leash. You can see the end of the rope here that has exploded. Sorry for the blurriness, but my camera always wants to focus on the background. It's anyway, the rope has exploded like in the knot and it has held about 8.6 kilonewtons, so actually less than expected. And yeah, now we need to find out how much this rope would hold when it's new to have a comparison. As a last test, we want to test our leash rings because so far we didn't manage to destroy them at all. And we opened them up because we want to test a single leash ring. And you can see that aluminum powder that has come up between the leash rings from all that friction over the about one and a half years that the leash rings were up there. Okay, destruction time. Always interesting to see those leash rings breaking. You can see here it has broken and it has really been bent a lot and it has broken at 38.38 kilonewton. So more than enough to break your back about 100 times. So I hope you enjoyed those interesting tests. It is actually the training high line where, for example, Team Audemars, Arne Lariers and also me are doing our sessions and a few more people are sessioning there almost every day. So definitely one of the most used high lines. And overall, I'm really, really happy with the results we could see, except for two things, which I'm a bit astonished. First of all, the low braking strength of the leash. I'm not worried about this one, it's still more than enough, but it's still pretty low. So I also need to, to find out like which version of the leash it was. It was definitely an Edelried, Edelried rope in there. So this, br this brand has made enough tests of the rope. So I definitely trust the rope, but it's still interesting that it breaks so low. And the more worrying thing is that the web lock has weakened the webbing where it was fixed. So here definitely more tests need to be done in future. The good thing with those permanent rigs when you retention is that you basically pull out the damaged part. But let's say you use a permanent rig up for like two months or so, and then you reuse it on another place and you put that damaged part into the rig, then this might be something where you need to pay attention with. So more um, more signs need to be done, especially on this matter with the weblock and the weakening of the webbing in the weblock over a long time. Yeah, apart from that, as I said, really, really happy how little damage the UV light has done to our webbing. And yeah, we will keep sessioning there. The line is up again on new webbing now, again on LSD tube. And I think we will leave it up for eight or nine months for the winter months this time and yeah, we'll come up with new tests soon.